What's up guys, this is Sean Dunn and today is another episode of Asking Sean. Let's just address a question from Michael Sadi via email. Right, thank you very much Michael. Uh, hi, my name is Mike. I come from the Philippines originally, but have since moved to KL since July 2018. Been a fan of your property videos ever since I started looking for places to stay in Malaysia. My family ended up moving into Infinity Tree residence in Sri Rampai and we like it here. The only downside is that there are not a lot of close options to eat. Yeah. They involve us walking a fair bit and a quite a distance and all with the construction going on, it seems like it will be a while before proper infrastructure is in place for people to stay. Anyway, the reason why I'm writing is because we are renting a 2 plus 1 place for 2000. We are considering moving somewhere else but we have a few questions on that. What are your thoughts on Sri Rambai Wasamaju as a whole? When would it make sense for an expert to consider purchasing a unit? And what factors do we need to consider as foreigner? Thanks again for taking the time to read my mail. Ciao! So thanks Michael Sadi. First of all, Wasamaju is a location for our Atas Malay friends. It's a very hot spot, especially with the uh, Sati Wangsa around, especially with the uh, UK Perdana, uh, that area, right? He has always been populated by the, the richer the richer crowds. Lah. So based on statistics and based on our sales uh, research, lah, I would say, uh, those condos surrounding, all the studio units tend to not be performing very well in comparison to the larger units. It means there are a lot of families. Then with uh, the proximity to KL, right? Wang Se Maju is seriously a location that is very underrated. A lot of people do not know, are not aware of the connectivity level from Wang Se Maju to go KL is actually very very near. However, like what you said, the choices of Makan, right? It's not there. So I do agree with that. So my take on it is because there's a lot of infrastructure work going on. Especially from the Duke Highway. Ever since the Duke Highway came out, Wasa Maju has boomed like nobody's business. And now with Duke Highway, it's actually branching further into look more locations. And then uh, MRR2, it's just like that really, you cannot do much. But then the connectivity next to the Infinity Tree area, right? Is still ongoing. What I'm trying to say is this, I think there's a lot of potential and that's the reason why a lot of developments are heading over there because of the infrastructure and the things. Like, because if you look into a location, right, it's only population, uh, infrastructure and culture. So if you look at the population, there's a lot of population because of the there's international schools, there is a hospital, there is uh, universities, there is a lot of things going on in that location. And now with infrastructure of MRR2, Duke Highway, and they're improving the local highway with LRT, the LRT is seriously very, very crucial in that location. So I think as for investment, right, if you're working in KL, it makes hell a lot of sense to actually buy one. Right? Then as a foreigner, there are a few things that you really need to take into consideration. Number one, you can only buy property above a million. In KL, because Wasamaju is KL, if you're trying to go for Slangor, Zone 1 and 2 is actually above 2 million but only Zone 3 in Slangor you can actually go for properties which is a million and uh, there are some restrictions on that but if you're just looking into apartments then we don't need to go that technical then moving on to the loan margin part right because as a foreigner by default you only can get like 70% if you go for a foreign bank such as like OCBC, CD Bank, Standard Chartered right they will give you higher margin by like 5% which is still 75%, you need to cough out still 25%. So it depends what are your plans, are, Mike. Is it whether to stay in long term already or do you have a partner that is actually Malaysian? If you have a partner that is actually Malaysian, uh, then what, you did, what, what, what can happen is uh, you use her name to actually get a loan which is automatically 90% loan of the S&P. If not, you can actually opt for the My Malaysian Second Home Scheme, then you can actually get up to 80% loan. So this is something, uh, but then please be aware of the RBGT revision because as foreigners now, you need to pay higher RBGT tax, gain tax after you buy and sell the property. So my take on your case is, uh, it depends whether is it long term, like if you are planning to stay in Malaysia for long term for the next 10-20 years, by so you can consider the My Malaysia Second Home Scheme. Uh, 
uh, if you're just here, you're not sure and you need that flexibility for your job, then continue renting might still be the option because now renting seems to be power, more in power than because property owners now are quite desperate because when they buy right the price are very high and now it's kind of like the oversupply kind of situation so tenants tend to have the higher say for the moment for these few years at least so that might be a consider so but my take is uh, i was i will always consider to buy i'm not sure whether are you into business or work so if you're into business and you need cash flows for to roll your business right then maybe renting provides you the flexibility in financing and uh, workplace and location but if you are really working for a corporate meaning stability is what you have then purchasing might be a better option for you so i think that's all for this episode uh for those who want to know or ask me more questions, right? please do just send an email below instead of texting me. Until next time, this is Sean Tan. Ciao!